and officers go to him and say, let us know what happened. <laughs> and the way he's treated, if he doesn't want to say anything, he's made out to be an accessory to whatever he has to say. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he, as well, is one of the criminals. Mm -hmm. Accessory to that bad behavior. You've seen this, you were a part of this, you were there, you've seen it, you are an accessory to what this individual has done. So what I'm saying is a conflict of interest being that people in the community understand this, mm -hmm. it is hard to convey a face of righteousness, a face of justice, mm -hmm. if individuals out there realize that this is going on in their community. That's part of it. I, I, yeah, and I, I think you're right, So, but I, I think in some ways the question gets to the heart of what, what, is, what does reform eventually look like? Mm -hmm. um, and you talked, you started by mentioning, Andre, about sort of the, the kind of command structure of so it really is up to the command structure supported by the elected officials to create a culture that allows that officer who sees bad behavior to go to their command structure, to go to the chief, to go to the, the chief's command structure and know that they'll be backed up. That really has, that sense of, that sense of security within the police force simply has to come from the leadership of the police department um, to provide that culture and change that. But the other piece, knowing that things take time, that change, change like this takes time, um, we know that um, there's things that the police force and we can do. The monitoring team has been, and the monitor, one of the monitor's lawyers is right here. Um, one of the things that they have been really big on us doing is getting the technology right that tracks behaviors that are questionable, that allows somebody like the, um, a, a community police commission or the inspector general to see those patterns and either change, retrain that officer or remove that officer. It's going to be a combination of those things that eventually change that culture. And in the, in, you know, in Chief O'Toole's only been here two years. She has moved and removed police officers. And um, it has been at times very controversial. So I'm gonna let other people add to that briefly. Yeah. Just to touch on a, a concrete point here in our city, currently <coughs> SPD officers are required under the rules to report perceived policy, anything that could be a policy violation to the Office of Professional Accountability. So you can have your internal and SPD officers should tell their supervisor about X, Y, and Z bad behavior. But one step further that is required currently is that that officer tells the external civilian-led Office of Professional Accountability about that behavior. And then that office, again, external to SPD, is has a duty to investigate. And after that investigation, that investigation, the results are reported. So that an officer knows that they're not only accountable to their own chain of command, they're, ex they're accountable to an external civilian-led body. And, and I would add that police officers do file complaints against each other at, at OPA, so it's... it's I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna get there, let me say one more thing, and I'll get to the audience. <coughs> um, I believe